Hey guys, Report Rockstar here. Today we're going to look at something very simple, but when you get into making your own macros, and especially as they get a little bit more complex, efficiency can come into question. You want your code to work quickly and effectively. And so one of the ways that you can measure that is in the time executed to run your macro. So what we're going to use today is a timer, and here's the simple code for it not very difficult. In our inside of our uh, sub we're going to have t equals timer. I always include this almost at the top always if I have a dimension I want to name a variable then I may put it under that but before it really starts executing any any real heavy lifting. Uh, and then at the very end we have a message box timer dash t. And that's just going to give us a box, a pop-up box that's going to say in seconds how long it took for this to execute. And so to demonstrate this, I've made two macros that are in essence identical in what they do. We have a for loop here. If you're familiar with those, that is just going to say repeat this line of code 5,000 times. So what it's saying is range A and I. If you put that together, select is saying A1. So it's going to grab that. Then the next time it's going to loop it and say now i equals 2. So range a2 and a3 and just select every single one of those like I'm doing. The second speed 2 here is also doing basically the same thing. Select range a1. Then it's going to say we're going to loop through this section here and it's going to say the active cell which is where your cursor is currently at. So it selects it and then active cell offset 1 zero. So this is your rows, offset one row, zero columns, select. So again, just moving down, 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 repeating that 5,000 times. So let's see, just for curiosity, if one is quicker than the other. F5 is the hotkey to run this. Wherever your, your cursor is, it will run that macro. So let's see, watch over here what happens. You can see we're just moving the cursor here. All right, 3.93 seconds. All right, interesting. Now, we're just going to move it back up to the top, and we're going to see what happens here. And run. 3.9, oh boy, look at that. 3.9375, let's try one more time. Three point nine two. Wow, there's almost no difference between these. And so uh, again, this is a simple example. I wouldn't expect much difference at all, if any, really. See so very, very slight variations between each time. So we don't see much difference here. So I wouldn't necessarily be able to definitively say, well, the active cell offset is much more efficient. Uh, then this range and select in a larger block of code, there definitely would uh, you know be opportunities to improve and fine tune that. So this is where this will come in handy. The thing that um, you can add to this that I usually do with mine is just say uh, something along the lines of macro completed in. I have to use an and percent string these together in this many seconds. Alright, so now if I were to run this, it's going to give me a message box that says macro completed in 3.4. That took, no, that was a little bit different there, uh, seconds here. 3.46 seconds. So very simple. Uh, again, that is just t equals timer up towards the top and then at the bottom the message box and you have to have that timer dash t so the simplest you can do is this and I hope that helps you streamline some of your uh, macro projects that you come up with it's certainly been helpful for me and uh, it's kind of fun to see how long especially when you get something that, that runs 8, 10, 12 minutes you can run a variation on your code and you can 
pretty easily identify savings or time savings, which is really, in my mind, one of the uh, important things about writing the macro is to be efficient and save time in the work that you do. All right. Hope this was helpful. Have a wonderful evening, guys, and we'll catch up with you next time. Report Rockstar, signing out.